All right, well, welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today I am going to be talking about the Petzl Grion. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. Thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. Um, I appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate everyone tuning into all, you know, my content that I make uh, out there. It uh, is great to get the conversation started. Um, right, wrong, otherwise, it's always good conversation uh, to be had. So, Anyways, moving on. Um, so today we are talking about the Petzl Grion. Um, and it's going to be a little bit more podcasty than it is going to be tech talk. Um, but at the end of the day, we are talking about a piece of gear. Now, if you are looking for a episode on all the specs and details about the Grion and showing you how to use it, that is not today's episode. Um, I'm just going to be talking about it as a piece of equipment um, and, you know, kind of ways that we're utilizing it in the fields and uh, stuff like that. All right. So um, before we really dive into the nitty gritty here, um, just kind of don't know if you were involved in my Instagram post um, a couple days ago. I posted a bunch of questions, polls on Instagram story there um, about the Petzl Creon, basically to lead up into this episode. Um, and the turnout was absolutely phenomenal, and I much appreciate it. Appreciate everyone taking the time to get involved with uh, the poll and the you know the question about you know the love hate about it. <clears throat> so. I found that approximately about 75% of the following of the people that responded are using the Petzl Grion um, actively in the field. Um, and that's a great, great number to see. Um, obviously, it's kind of showing the transition to the newer generation of using adjustable lanyards. Um, but there are still, you know, companies out there and very large companies out there, um, you know, wherever you may be that, you know, don't have the accessibility to uh, the Grion. Um, they're potentially not utilized in the company for one reason or another cost. Um, you know, it's not on their approved gear list. Uh, something that they just haven't ventured into yet and hopefully maybe one day in the in, in the near future they'll kind of jump in on board and uh, start utilizing you know adjustable lanyards now if that's a Petzl Grion or if it's something else it doesn't really matter but at the end of the day um, in a lot of cases these adjustable lanyards are going to help us um, but then also Equally to that, um, a lot of people were complaining about the price. Now, at the end of the day, um, I don't know how many people out there are having to supply their own equipment. Um, that'll really depend. So, yes, the cost of this item of equipment will really dictate, you know, what you're going to, you know, use um, to create that adjustable lanyard kind of mechanism um now here in canada the grion goes for approximately about 275 dollars canadian um so that is a pretty hefty chunk of change um and especially if you are in that position where you're having to supply your own equipment so keep that in mind um obviously depending on where you're working um where you're living obviously uh, that may differ but yeah so anyways, at the end of the day, thank you very much for tuning into the Instagram stories there. Um, if you aren't following me on Instagram, check out the link 
to the uh, side of me here. Um, moving on. Um, so, so bringing up the next part of this conversation, um, this has kind of been sparked on from a couple of people I've encountered in the field um, over the last little bit that I've been working here. Um, as you can see, I'm not in my studio, so I am in the field working away here. Um, so it's pretty interesting to see, you know, people come up to me and they're like, hey, so are you pro Grion or anti Grion? Um, oh, I've heard another one is like, oh, I've heard that you really dislike the Grion, um, you know, and and the list continues. But that's kind of why I'm talking about it today um, and why it has to be, you know, specific to one item of equipment. Like I said, in the beginning of this um, episode, I think it's a great thing moving forward and companies are getting on board with utilizing, you know, this new equipment, new technology. Um, so do I dislike the Grion? Absolutely not. That's not the point at all. Um, but I definitely do have some qualms with it, as I'm sure some people do. Um, as an instructor, that's probably the reason why I have the most qualms with it, with it is because of the instruction process. Um, there's a lot of ins and outs, um, details, and then, you know, what one person's being trained on opposed to another person being trained on it. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that here in a bit, <clears throat> but, um, at the end of the day, no, I, I think that adjustable lanyards are, are great no matter what device you're using. Um, and you know, it's really going to be dependent on the person specifically on how they utilize it. And if they're able to actually utilize it to its fullest potential, also use it properly. So, um, but yeah, so going into my personal kit out on site, I carry a basic kit. I don't even carry a Grion. I don't carry a, any sort of an adjustable lanyard. Um, I carry one duck. I carry one ASAP ID hand descender, a standard Petzl foot loop, um, and two spare locking carabiners as well uh something that i've uh on the job that i'm on here specifically um we're doing a lot of work through grading so i literally carry around a set of uh ropes edge vortexes um because i just never know when those are going to come in handy uh, like i said we're we're rigging up a lot of ropes through grading on this job so it's really handy to have those right on your side lightweight um, not super bulky, um, easy to use. Um, but yeah, so the vortexes are, have been a, a freaking godsend for me here. So, but, um, you know, like I said, I don't carry an adjustable lanyard. I don't, they're big, they're bulky. They're an extra piece of kit on your, on you. It doesn't really matter. And at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the individuals that are on ropes climbing around and stuff, chances are they probably have one. Um, if I was in a situation that I require one, um, you know, I'm not working by myself. So, you know, it's not very hard for me to look at the person beside me and say, Hey, I need to, uh, need your gear on. It's totally fine. Um, I'm not going to carry equipment that I don't require. You know, I'm not going to carry a, a basic Napoleon. A lot of people ask me why I don't do that either. Um, because you know, it, someone else on the crew is carrying it for me. So I don't need to carry extra, uh, extra kit. Um, and that's just the reality of it. Um, but diving into, um, one of these things about why I don't necessarily, I'm not hundred percent sold on it. And this comes, like I said, down to the training side. So, I have encountered in training um, people that have come in for their reserting le uh, levels and their level prior to them showing up at the facilities that I've trained at, which do not provide grions for anybody. Um, you know, they did a course at a location that had grions. So, you know, makes your rescues that much easier, makes the deviations 
that much easier. You know, Greenlands are everywhere. Great, that's fine if the company that you're training with wants to provide that. But out in the field, if you're working for a company that doesn't provide Greons, you know, if you've not been trained to utilize or do the rescues or the maneuvers without this item of equipment, and then you show up and work for a company that doesn't supply Greons or doesn't allow Greons, um, go and do an, a, a rescue. I think you should go jump into the training center that they provide and do a refresher training without the Greons and test yourself and see if you still have the ability to do the rescues. Not saying you wouldn't be able to figure it out, but you're definitely not going to be as proficient. Um, and you know, hindsight 2020, um, you know, you don't want to be caught with your pants down between your ankles when, you know, the going gets tough there and you have to actually perform a rescue. Now, hopefully that whatever you've rigged up or what the person rigged up prior to you doesn't, uh, you know, require a agree on. But if that's the only device that you've been trained on using, that's going to cause a lot of conflict. Now, like I said, it's not that you're not going to be able to figure it out. I'm not saying that. But, you know, it's going to be a much different rescue if you do not have some sort of an adjustable lanyard. Okay? That's the biggest thing that I don't like about them is these training companies are utilizing them and then not training to do the rescues without them. So then, you know, obviously it's not up to the training company to, it's not their, their job to, to do this, but at the end of the day, like, you know, these people are going to go work for whomever out there and you, you know, are you really setting them up for the real world, whatever that may look like with or without Greons. But I think that people need to have the ability to do these rescues with and without uh, the Greon. Um, people are just getting to that point where they rely on it day in and day out, day in and day out. And don't get me wrong, you know, um, as a as a level two or a level three, sending a level one up there to do aid climb, heck, get them on Greons. Because, you know, when they're on Greon, you can go up there, do the rescue, you just lower the Greon, and your rescue is now a rope trope transfer instead of having to pick somebody. I get it. It's a great piece of kit that way. Um, it's great for creating adjustable deviations. It's great for creating you know, horizontal lifelines, uh, tension lines, stuff like that. But, you know, to be taking the the guesswork out of, of rope access and, and being able to utilize all the equipment on your personal kit uh, to its fullest advantage is kind of going to the wayside. Um, you know, a lot of people um, knock the old guys and gals for being in it for so long and, oh, well, you know, I, I like the old ways, just kind of, that's what they're used to. People knock that because, oh, well, you know, why would you want to work harder? Um, but, you know, if you took, uh, it, if, if if you kind of looked at what they did and how, looked at the way that they utilize the equipment and, you know, maximize its performance, um, right, you can't take anything away from experience. So think about it from that side, Okay. Those are kind of going into my thoughts um, with all this. Don't, uh, you know, maybe I'm completely wrong. And let me know in the comments below uh, what you think about this. But it's definitely something that has been on my mind since I started this job because it's just kind of people are poking at me being like, hey, I heard you don't like this. And it's not that I don't like an item of equipment. Don't really care. Um you know, if I have a diff, uh, a chance to use a progress adjust over a Greon, there's no way in heck I'm picking up a Greon. Um, I love the progress adjusts, but they also have their limitations as well. So no matter what piece of equipment you're using, no matter where you're working in the world, there's always going to be limitations. And at the end of the day, you need to be trained on that piece of equipment. So if you're not trained 
um, on a piece of equipment, make sure you talk to your technical authority or your subject matter expert at the company you're working for to make sure that you are perfectly competent in your current level, being level two or level three primarily is what I'm getting at here. Um, make sure that you're able to go do those rescues and make sure you're trained on the equipment. All right. So that's what I have for today. Please let me know in the comments below uh, what your thoughts are on this topic, uh, what your thoughts are on Grions or Progress Adjust, any of that sort of stuff. All right. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button. It shows me that you support my channel. Also, if you haven't, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Yeah, it's right down there. And I'll see you on the next one.